Hi Kenyans, I welcome all of you to this YouTube channel. If you've bumped here for the very first time, feel free to subscribe, but don't forget to give this video a like. Yes, guys, we saw a group of men and one woman at State House, Nairobi today. There was one Kalonzo Musioka, Musalia Mudavadi, Gideon Moi, Moses Wetangula, Chari Tingilu, Raila Molo Dinda, and our president Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta. Most media houses termed, termed that group as the BBI Summit. They termed it as BBI Summit. When they talked about the BBI summit, it reminded me of 2002, the NAC summit that swept, <laughs> that swept the whole nation through euphoria. It also mind, reminded me of 2007, the Pentagon that went and swept the whole nation. So the BBI summit reminded me of these past incidences. But one person was missing from that group. That person is one William Ruto. Ladies and gentlemen, nature designs things to happen as they did happen today. It's not Uhuru Kenyatta's fault that William Ruto was not there. But that's how nature designed it to happen. So let me give you a little story of an incident that was the same or rather was similar to what is happening today in Kenya and how the whole incident or rather the whole thing ended. Let me give you this story of one man called Nicolas Fouquet. Nicolas Fouquet was what we can call today as the finance minister in France. So he was the finance minister in the administration of a king called Louis the 14th. In those days, the king appointed a prime minister to rule on his behalf. So the prime minister who was appointed by this king, King Louis the 14th, died while in office. The prime minister was one man called Jules Mezarin. So Jules Mezarin died in office. So it was incumbent upon the king to appoint another prime minister who would rule on his behalf. And the person who fitted, who fitted the bill, or a person who was believed by many to the, be the most suitable, was one man called Nicolas Fouquet, the finance minister. So instead of the king appointing Nicolas Fouquet straight to the post of the, of the prime minister, the king abolished the post of the prime minister altogether. So Nicolas Fouquet felt that maybe his relationship with the king was growing cold. So he organized a very lavish party a party that was meant to endear him back to the king. So he organized a very lavish party in one of his newly built castles. Nicolas, Nicolas Fouquet was a man of means. He was so influential, so lavish, and he loved good things in life. He loved good women, he loved poetry, he loved jewelry, and the people loved him too. He was a popular man on the ground. 
and a man of means. He could loan the government money and the government would return it back to him at an interest. That's how influential and how wealthy Nicholas Fouquet was. So he organized this lavish party in one of his newly built castles. His newly built castle, we can say that in the whole of France, there had never been a castle that could match Nicolas Fouquet's castle. So he organized a lavish party in that his newly built castle. And the king was invited as the guest of honor. The aim of the party was maybe to endear himself back to the king. So many people came. Who is who in the society, or rather in France, came? <laughs> Big minds of the time came. And one very funny thing, or one ironical thing, is that all these guests, when, when they were invited to speak, each and every guest was just praising Nicolas Fouquet. Every guest that was invited to speak was just throwing and showering Nicolas Fouquet and praising Nicolas Fouquet. And the king was just there silently listening as these people were praising and heaping praises on Nicolas Fouquet. So the king might have felt a little bit inferior or a little bit threatened. Hmm? The king felt inferior, a little bit threatened. Because this man, Nicholas Fouquet, was not only a wealthy man, but very popular. And then here, he has built a castle that has never been built in France, and guests are praising him. Everybody who stands is not even acknowledging the king, but just acknowledging and praising Nicholas Fouquet. So the king felt a little bit scared, a little bit insecure. So the party went till wee hours in the morning. <laughs> I hope you are following this story, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to listen keenly to this story. And then you relate it exactly to what is happening today in Kenya. And then you will just know how all this thing is going to end up. History has the answer for all this thing. You don't need to wait till 2022. So the, the lavish party went till wee hours of the morning. The following day, the king ordered for the arrest of Nicholas Fouquet. The king sent the head of his musketeers, somebody by the name de Artagnan, and Nicholas Fouquet was arrested. The charge was embezzlement of public finance. After three months of trial, Nicolas Fouquet was thrown into a very isolated prison in France. He died in prison after about 20 years, ladies and gentlemen. He died in prison. A man who was very influential, a man who was very much loved by the people, and a man who could not be matched by any other person, for the post of the prime minister. He died in prison after 20 years. He was charged of embezzlement of public finance. Embezzlement of public finance. In fact, historians tell us that the embezzlement was done with the king's permission. He was embezzling the public finance through the king's permission. He was doing it on behalf of the king. So he's there dead. So the king goes on to appoint a new finance minister called Jean Baptiste Colbert, a man who is known not to be lavish. So any money that tre treasury recovers, Jean Baptiste makes sure he, hand he hands them he added all the money that was recovered by the treasury in the hands of the young king, the king of the sun. So the king ironi ironically builds a very big, 
a very big castle that is even bigger than the one that had made Nicholas Fouquet to be sent in prison. The king builds a bigger castle and, a mo and organizes a very lavish party. So if that man was... So from that you can clearly see, ladies and gentlemen, that maybe it was not even about the castle. It was... The king felt inferior. It was the castle, or rather, let me put it this way. Nicholas Fouquet building a big castle and organizing a lavish party made the king feel insecure. So after he has been charged of corruption and embezzlement of public finance, the king goes ahead to build a bigger castle, ladies and gentlemen. All this story <clears throat> brings us to one conclusion. The 48 laws of power. The first law of the 48 laws of power. A book by an American author, Robert Green, ladies and gentlemen. Let me read for you the first law of the 48 laws of power, ladies and gentlemen. For you to understand what I'm trying to say properly. Let me read it for you. <clears throat> I hope you can see it. Let me read it for you. Law number one, the first law of the 48 laws of power. Law number one, never outshine the master. Always make boss above you feel comfortably superior. In your desire to please and impress them, do not go too far in displaying your talents or you might accomplish the opposite, inspire fear and insecurity. Make your master appear more brilliant than they are and you will attain the heights of power. That's the first law of the 48 laws of power. Never outshine the master. We are given an example of somebody who observed that law and he achieved a lot. Galileo Galilei. He observed that first law and he achieved a lot in life. And that's why up to today we talk about Galileo Galilei. There is another big mind, a philosopher here in the name of Baltasar Gracian. Baltasar Gracian gives us another example. He says, The stars in the sky, there can only be one sun at a time. Never obscure the sunlight or rival the sun's brilliance, but rather fade into the sky and find ways to heighten the master's stars intensity. The lost, that one just supports never outshine the master. Avoid outshining the master. All superiority is odious. But the superior, yeah, the, I want you now to listen to that point. But the superiority of a subject over his prince is not only stupid, it's fatal. <laughs> This is a lesson that the stars in the sky teach us. They may be related to the sun and just as brilliant, but they never appear in her company. <laughs> That's how tough things are, ladies and gentlemen. That's the first law of the 48 laws of power. So today, ladies and gentlemen, everybody is talking about William Ruto. And everybody is wondering, or everybody is wondering, eh, and, and trying to figure out 
How is all this game going to end, ladies and gentlemen? The truth of the matter is, what is happening today has been designed by nature to happen as it's happening today. So the forces of nature has it that anybody who outshines the master never, never lives to be the master. And we have been given an example of Nicolas Fouquet who dies in prison because he made the master feel insecure. William Ruto has outdone the master badly. He has made the master be the laughingstock in his own backyard of Central. He has, he has outdone the master so badly to a point that William Ruto appears to be more popular today than the president, while he is just the deputy president. That's how badly he has outdone the master. The punishment is one. He is going to be thrown into a very isolated prison. The same fate that befell Nicholas Fouquet is poised and charged towards William Ruto, ladies and gentlemen. William Ruto, if you go back to history properly, is not going to be president in 2022. I can say that if I study history properly and what happened in other jurisdictions, I can confirm and say authoritatively that this man is not going to be president in 2022. Forces of nature have gunned against him. He is not going to be president, ladies and gentlemen. Let me leave it there, folks. If you are new here, just as I said when we were starting, make sure you subscribe, but also make sure you give this video a like. In this channel, we basically talk about politics. The kind of analysis we do here, you can get it no any, nowhere else. We take our time to do a research on a topic, and then we give it out, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Thank you.